All right, guys, so now that we opened up ZBrush, let's hit comma on the keyboard to get rid of this screen here to close down this. And now we want to go to Polymesh 3D and let's just start importing these. And we'll go to import. And then we'll grab our, uh, our high poly models. So wherever you store those, go grab um, one by one. So I'll grab the breach first, hit open, and quickly you'll see that this is now the breach. So each time you want to add a new object, you have to go to sub tool, append, and grab your polymesh 3D. Or it could be anything, but I just use the polymesh 3D because it's, that's the way I learned when I first started using ZBrush. Now I'll just fast forward this process so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me import all these separately. And um, yeah, let's go. All right guys, so after importing all of your high poly models created from Fusion 360 into ZBrush, now I wanna to bring to your attention uh, on the right side here, you see the sub tools. Notice all of the suffix say high, and that's what you wanna ensure that everything that you bring into here matches the same thing, the same naming convention as the low poly we created in Maya. Because this is gonna play a huge role in our next step once we bring all of this geometry into Substance Painter for baking. So the reason, I, I do wanna bring attention guys, the reason by, that I brought this sphere in here is because if I were to close this uh, ZBrush file and open it back up, uh, the names would be a little different. Like this first tool here would have a different name than, not, than, than Breach. It would say something different. It's, it's something with ZBrush, it's like a, there's a bug that's always been there. Or maybe just the version I've been using, but. I always put a, a, like a sphere or something to go to the top. So once I open this back up, if I do end up closing it or it ends up shutting down, I'll have this sphere to take the fall. So now really quick, if I hit shift F, I'll go into wireframe mode. And you guys can see the, the wireframe that we exported from Fusion 360. And one thing that I want to bring to your attention guys, you see this weird triangulation right if i were to bake this right now we'd have all these lines going through our low poly and that's just not going to cut it and as well guys if we try to model right now so if i hit shift f to unshow the wireframe if i wanted to start sculpting on this look what happens you see some uh, deformity going on here and that's because of the faceting and the high poly that we exported from fusion because it's a cad program so it doesn't know to to, to fill these in Right, so to go about fixing this, we have to uh, uh, dynamesh this so we can fill all these little faces in with more faces. So this is gonna bog down your system depending on uh, what kind of processor and GPU you have for your, uh, your, your PC or laptop. So what I'll do now is go to geometry, dynamesh, and I want to I guess I can, I guess 128 might be fine. Let's check it out. Let's see what this does, 128. And I'll try to blur it down. So 120, 128 does this. You see the facet's still there and that's just not gonna cut it. So I'm gonna control Z this. Then I'll just ramp this up a bit to something like, let's try 712, see how that does. So it's computing right now. You can see it's processing at the top. Now this looks good. So shift F to go back to wireframe. You see how dark this is now. And this lets you know that this is a lot better. So if I wanted to start sculpting now, this is what we want to see. So we have to dynamesh the rest of the parts on here as well. All right guys, really quick, you can see that all the parts are now really dense and now we can start to sculpt on these without any uh, artifacting going on. So let's add a little bit of detail to this just to ramp it up a bit.
now this is done, now we can start to export this from ZBrush. So I'm just going to hit another save. It's always good to save your work because you never know when an accident might, might occur. So we can't export this like how we imported the model in because we want to export this as an FBX. So we can export the entire um, model as one, but still keep the sub models inside. The naming convention is correct. So to go about doing this, you want to go up to uh, Z plugin, FBX, import, export, and I'm going to do visible. So I have uh, selected visible because I don't want this sphere to come with a model. This sphere is only here, as I told you guys, to fix another issue that ZBrush has. So, and I don't want this to come with us, so I'm going to only export visible. And then I'm going to have it as a bin, not an OSCII, and I'm going to export. And I want the same name as the low FBX, but change it to high. Now I can save it. And it's doing its export right now, you can see. So now that that's complete, we can now start the Substance Painter section of the series.